How about a round of applause for our bells? <laughs> the Lord be with you. You know that response real well. Let me try this one. Christ is risen. 
It's been six Sundays since we uh, did that, and so I'm impressed. So thank you for that. We're still living in that season of announce, uh, that announcement and uh, celebrating that. Welcome to worship here at First Lutheran Church in St. James. For those who are joining us by live stream, we're glad that you joined with us who are in the sanctuary to hear God's word today. I want to say a happy Mother's Day to those for whom that fits uh, and for who have been called to that vocation. May it be a, a blessed day for you. We have flowers here, uh, both from the memorial service of Rose Ludvigson, which was on Friday, and uh, we thank the family for sharing those with us in remembrance of Rose. As I said last Sunday, the painting is done. We're grateful for uh, you know, the three weeks uh, of work, uh, the pews being moved, everything, uh, the lights, uh, the new glass has is, is, is been put in the light globes. So, but we have other things that you'll notice are being done. We have a five-foot cross uh, laying out over here, uh, and that's going to be hung here, as, and then also there's going to be some uh, material put up in front of some of the pipes. So those are the things we're, we're still working on and, and some other things too. So we're grateful for this uh, Refresh the Sanctuary project uh, as we celebrate our 150th anniversary this year. It's a special day for us as a congregation as we welcome new members into our fellowship. And so that'll be a part of our worship service today. Uh, the coffee hour, because of uh, new member reception, the coffee hour is moved up to our social hall, and I welcome all of you to go up there as we continue to uh, introduce and welcome the new members. I'm going to leave the rest of the announcements to your reading unless one of you has an announcement you'd like to make sure it gets mentioned. Anything? Okay, let us enter into worship then with our confession on the, in the red hymnal on page 94. And let us stand too, as you're able to uh, take part in this part. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us sing number three, under 380, uh, this Easter hymn, Alleluia, Jesus Lives.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to invite children up for a children's message. It's a really good one, so you... I guess I'll have to save it for another Sunday, though. But, you know, we had Sunday school end last Sunday, and so now in the summer months, our, our uh, children attendance is sometimes a little less, so let's go to our bell choir anthem.
Acts chapter 17. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the de deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Please read responsively Psalm 66. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. For you, O God, have tested us. You brought us into the net. You let people ride over our heads. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. Those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised, I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. Come and hear, all you who fear God. I have cried aloud to him. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, but truly God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God because he had not rejected my prayer. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in whom also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Be Please stand for the Alleluia verse.
Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Jesus speaking to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be within you. He'll be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of our Lord. I had mostly written my sermon uh, earlier in the week, and then when I came back to it last night, I went, I just think this could be said in a different way. So I rewrote it in, in a dialogue. Uh, and then I thought, well, who can I get to read the other part this, you know, in such, in such short notice? And I thought, my daughter's home from school. And she's always willing. So, Elizabeth, if you would, she'll go to the lectern. And it's a, a sermon about the second lesson from First Peter. Uh, and you noticed in that lesson there were a couple underlined lines, uh, which are the focus of our dialogue today. And I have these enduring terms, which... They're not historical for us as a family. I uh, just picked them. Uh, that's toothpick, and I'm paperclip. <laughs> Hello, toothpick. What's the Bible reading we're focusing on today? Greetings, paperclip. There is an interesting teaching of the Apostle Peter in the letter First Peter. It goes like this. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone. Oh, defense. That's what we need more of in the Christian church. Defense wins Super Bowls. Defense would be good for us as Christians to be ready to do. Uh -huh, we don't want to get pushed around. And, and what exactly does Peter want us to defend? Well, it says... Uh, wait, let me guess. We have to defend this nice building that we have. Or how about we have to defend our reputation in the world? Am I close? No, not at all. Well, what is it then we have to be ready to defend? Hope. Hope? Yes, our hope. Always be ready to make a defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Well, that's interesting. Hope. I remember that Peter wrote this letter to Christians who were being mistreated by other in their community, others in their community. They were suffering, sometimes even being persecuted for believing that Jesus was Lord. I think hope can be a casualty when, we are, when you are suffering. You don't feel very hopeful when life gets hard. Peter seems to focus on hope in this letter. Yes, in fact, that's the way he starts this letter. By God's great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A new birth into a living hope. Peter must have wanted them to know that they still had reason to hope even if they were suffering. And from what you read, the hope was based on something real. 
which is the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. His resurrection is the source of Christian hope. When things were dark because of Jesus' death, when the powers of evil seemed strong, God acted and brought Jesus back to life. Okay, so Christians have hope, not based on what we've done, but based on what God has done. And what God is still doing. Oh yes, God hasn't given up on this world, hasn't given up on us. God's love is too steadfast. So, if we get criticized for acting out of hope, even going into hopeless situations with kindness or praying for causes that seem hopeless, we can make our defense. God can make good things come out of hopeless situations. That'll preach. That's good news. So we can give a defense of our Christian hope. If someone comes to me, uh, if some, excuse me, if someone comes after me for acting with hope for what God can do, I'll just bop them on the head and give them a few choice words. No, no, your defense has to be done in a certain way. Peter talks about that too. What does he say? Do it with gentleness and reverence. Gentleness and reverence. Isn't that like playing defense with your hands behind your back? Look at it this way. If you did as you propose, bopping them on the head and giving them a few choice words, you may be defending your hope, but you would be distracting from the way of Christ. Yeah, I get it. Sometimes how you do something is as important as what you do. Gentleness and reverence are the ways we witness to Jesus. Right. And even being willing to suffer is a witness to Jesus. Peter says it a few times in this letter, Jesus suffered. Jesus suffered for doing good. He suffered for being faithful. We might expect to have the same thing happen to us. Suffering for doing the right thing is difficult to hear. But knowing that even Jesus suffered and was willing to suffer points us in the right direction. Maybe it even renews our hope. Well, let's review. We as Christians have been given a living hope through Jesus' resurrection, but the hardships of the world may challenge us and make us wonder if there is reason to hope, or others can challenge us for living with hope. We should be ready to speak about why we have hope even in dark times, and we should be able to do it with gentleness and reverence. If I had to give a gentle and reverent defense of my hope, I would just quote Jesus, who said, with God, all things are possible. God hasn't given up on us, and since God is faithful, I won't give up on this world, and my neighbor, or whatever might oppose God. A good witness, paperclip. Maybe you'll win with that defense. Or something better. I was looking at this passage that you quoted, and in a few verses after what you said, Peter says, Christ suffered for sins once for all in order to bring you to God. To bring you to God, to bring others to God, that is a far better goal than me winning. Good point. That will preach too. In the end, it isn't about what we do or what we aim at or what we win at, but that God be lifted up and that people believe that God is gracious, forgiving, and wanting to claim them as God's daughters and sons. We as Christians are fortunate to know God in this way. We've been baptized into a life with a gracious and faithful God. God claims us as his own and gives us hope. And Peter would want us to be witnesses to our God, even if it brings suffering upon us, so that others may know God through Jesus, experience the powerful love of God, and have reason for hope, because Jesus has been raised from the dead. Amen to that, toothpick. Let us sing hymn number 451.
Please stand as you're able and let us together as one confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God, our faithful companion, you promise to never leave us, and you send your Spirit to guide us. By your great promises, we live in confidence that we are loved and we are yours. We rejoice at the first anniversary of the baptism of Lena Rotert and give thanks that you have reached out to all who are baptized. In praise to you and rejoicing in Jesus' resurrection, we lift these prayers to you. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant that the human role in creation may be one of caretaker for the earth and not just one of consumer of the earth. Grant us patience as we endure heavy rains in this past week and renew our land for the benefit of many. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to those who are oppressed. Speak truth to power through your prophetic word. Hear us, O God. Nurturing Lord, you send your spirit to give us peace. Make, us, make your presence known for those who feel abandoned or alone. We also pray for those who are sick or grieving, and today we name Stan Askelin, Linda Berman, Rhonda Davidson, Jean Deegan, Vern Finisted, Sandy Friesen, Laverne Hammer, Lavon Hinchin, Monica Humbles, Arlo and Marilyn Hunstead, Daryl Jensen, Mar Marlon Johnson, Aaron Keel, Susan Kuiper, Phyllis Lehman, Jackie Lenz, Sonia Lubke, Don Mackey, Cindy Malone, Hannah Ulrich, Larry Miller, Trent Matter, Gary Miller, Chris Nordby, Ruth Olson, Trevor Randall, David Rainey, Mark Richardson, Erica Rodriguez, Natasha Schiffler, Bev Tate, Bailey Trickle, Mark Eufer, John Young, and others whom we hold in our hearts. Hear us, O God. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers mother and mother figures with thanksgiving. We also remember those who long to be mothers and pray for an answer to their prayers. Console those who have faced miscarriages or infertility issues. And also we pray for those estranged from their mothers or grieving their mother's absence. Hear us, O God. Almighty God, we give, you give life and breath to all things. We give thanks for all your saints. We give thanks for the life of Rose Ludvigsen, whom we, we remembered this past Friday. Sustain us by your love until we are joined with all the saints in glory. Hear us, O God. Send your people into the world to serve and to be a witness to you, the hope of what you can still do. Make us reflect and magnify your care for others. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
Please be seated. At this time, I wanted to uh, introduce you to some uh, people who are joining us in the Fellowship of Faith here at First Lutheran, and we want to uh, give thanks to God for them, um, but also uh, ask of them, as we ask of all our members, uh, to join with us in the mission we share together. So I invite up Shane and Amanda Nelson. Shane uh, and Amanda live here in St. James, and uh, Shane grew up in uh, Butterfield, a member of First Lutheran in Butterfield. Amanda uh, was a member of the Catholic Church, and you have to remember the community again. It was Elbert. Elbertville. Okay. And then Julie Newberg, who was uh, grew up here at First Lutheran, and is the daughter of Marcia Keach. And her most recent membership is in Faith Lutheran in Rapid City, South Dakota. Currently, she resides in Worthington. So, let me join you here, brothers and sisters in Christ. Brother and sisters in Christ, you have been baptized into Christ and made members of the church. Today we welcome you into this congregation and pray that in this community of faith you'll be nurtured in your relationship with God and with God's people. We also ask that you will join with us in service and mission for Jesus' sake. Our mission is summarized this way. We are a community living our Christian faith in worship and service. We have just confessed our faith. It is a faith that we share together. As you enter into this congregation and its mission, I ask that you make the same commitment that we all make as Christians. And here it is spelled out, that in your time here at First Lutheran, you'll continue in the covenant God first made with you to live among God's faithful people, to hear God's word and share in holy communion, to proclaim the good news of God in word and deed, to serve all people, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If this also is your mission, please say, I will, with the help of God. And members of First Lutheran, will you regard these fellow members as part of this body of Christ? So answer, we will. Then let us pray. Gracious God, as you give faith to people, you give them a community also to continue to live out that faith. We thank you for these who now continue their faith journey among us here at Face Lutheran. May they be blessed, may they be a blessing to us with what they bring, and may our community be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us welcome them with our applause. The offerings are uh, given at the door as you come or go, and so thank you for that. And for many of you, you give them electronically in various ways. So thank you for all the offerings. We also have a. This is the last. Uh, this is the end of the program year for our bell choir. So they have three songs to share with us, and this will be the third offering.
Please stand and let us sing 388. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I was going to say at a couple different times in the service that Aaron Keel's surgery went very well. So I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, and she's hospitalized and we coming home this week we expect so and I forgot my bulletin the closing hymn is 545 545 We go in peace to serve the Lord.